Hey everyone, in case you missed last week's episode, I just wanted to remind you that this episode will be part one of two. In today's episode, we are talking about a four-part BBC miniseries, and Sarah and I ended up talking about it for over a half an hour. So, since there was so much to cover, we decided that it would be best to cut the episode into two parts. This week, we'll be discussing parts one and two, and next week, we'll be discussing episodes three and four. Okay, on to the episode. Thanks for watching. Hey everyone, welcome back to Wonderland Wednesday. This week we're talking about the 1986 BBC miniseries. This series was created by a bunch of the same people who worked on Doctor Who around that same time. And when you're watching it, it's very clear that it's a BBC production. And it's very clear that the Doctor Who team is working on it because it just has that kind of feel. The 80s BBC... He has a Doctor better Doctor Who weirdness. Yeah, he has a better feel for the Doctor Who, but I definitely had a feel for the era in BBC and even just the music. I kept thinking Pride and Prejudice. <laughs> the music is different than Doctor Who's music, but it was still very BBC-esque. Very, yeah. I, I mean, I've watched com British comedies from that er era and um, just their use of like, I don't know, the brass or something. It really did remind me of Pride and Prejudice. The miniseries was split into four parts, and all the episodes were sort of bookended by Lewis Carroll telling the story of Alice to... Was it Alice and her sisters? Was yes. one of the girls Alice? Yes. One okay, of them. I didn't know if it was the same actress or not. They did it differently because when she's in the boat, her hair is done differently and her outfit is different, but it is definitely the same person. She was a very different Alice, not because she was an adult, because we've seen that so much now, even just beginning in this, um, but she was a redhead, is a redhead, and her dress was pink, so that was just kind of an interesting, like, with as faithful as they were being with so many things, that was just an interesting little deviation. They ha sort of had that footage, most of the scenes with them, in sort of a sepia or black and white it was tone. It was black and white. It was like they had taken, it was color footage that they had turned black and white because when he started telling the story of Alice, the camera would sort of pan away from them and you'd see that the actors playing in another part of the scene and then the color would slowly fill in and it would become a color production rather than black and white. All the dialogue and everything that happened was pretty faithful to what happened in the book. The only thing that it differed significantly on was the addition of a lot of songs. They did have a lot of songs and maybe some of the lines from them were from the book, but I felt like they were trying to get a little bit philosophical at one point or just, I don't know, some of it wasn't really necessary, I didn't think. Yeah, it really felt like the songs were there to add to the runtime, And I mean, it was fine. It wasn't like they were terrible songs that I was completely not enjoying. I just kind of felt myself wishing like, come on, we could hurry up to the next thing here. They did a good job of incorporating the white rabbit. They didn't do anything really weird with his character. The makeup was pretty good too. This is probably the longest falling scene mm -hmm. we have ever seen. It incorporated like all the dialogue from the book, plus a song, plus I don't know what all, but it just was like... It was like she was going through multiple houses and rooms and... Yeah, the background was changing constantly. I, got, I don't know how they did that. And I got a kick out of it because when you get to the part with the marmalade, they really belabored the marmalade and it's like, oh, leave it to the British. <laughs> mm. You just love your marmalade, don't you? Another thing, okay, the Hall of Doors looks like a genuine grand British house, so I kind of geeked out over that a little bit. It was really pretty. They did not do the Pool of Tears justice. It was just like a tiny puddle and then all of a sudden at some point she's swimming in it and it didn't make complete sense. Mm -hmm. Her crying seemed fake, <laughs> 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 which isn't the end of the world. Um, something that 
I, I did like this version. There were very likable things about it. But, and while she was an interesting Alice, it was somebody trying to pretend to act like a little girl. And it didn't come off right to me. Because it's just like, oh, I am thinking this, and I am thinking this, and I am doing this. And it just, the way she talked, it just didn't fit to me. Moving on. She got into the garden, and you have the caucus race. They really kind of went all out in the costuming because it wasn't animated or anything and they weren't really bulky costumes they mostly focused on like heads and tails i suppose mm -hmm. yeah, there was a lot of face makeup and a lot of a lot of prosthetics because all of the animals had movable mouths they weren't like completely believable movable mouths but but it was, it was really detailed yeah it was sort of the kind of thing you would see on like a doctor who alien and i thought a lot of like the reptile things looked like something that would be on on Doctor Who well, at that time. And the creatures that have fur, like the mm. monkeys. I uh, the the mon monkeys were really well the done. The monkeys were good. The caucus race, I think they were relatively true to that. But you end right after the caucus race and it's sort of, I don't know, maybe a slow start to the story or kind of an odd start. But keep pushing past the first episode because the first episode's pretty good. But the second episode I really, mm -hmm. really liked because you go on to the White Rabbit's house and they did a great job with that scene. Mm -hmm. She gets mistaken for Marianne, she heads off to the house and you have her growing and singing this song about does she ever want to grow up or something or you know and get old and oh but never to be married oh i mean yeah it, it was a very interesting choice that didn't we didn't really feel like it fit in the scene but the scene was so great their little house interior was very nice um it was so british because you have these creatures in their high boots and their accents and they did just a great job they had pat and bill and they just they filled it out really well mm -hmm. and they did a really good job with the scene where he gets kicked out of the chimney <laughs> it was just really cute they have rocks thrown in the window and they turn into little cakes and she shrieks from that and uh they just covered a lot of little details the caterpillar was kind of neither here nor there for me. If Rudyard Kipling was a caterpillar, that's what he would have looked like. They didn't really touch on the bird. Eventually she gets to the Duchess's house, and there was a lot of interesting choices here as well. Um, I think Sarah seemed to like the cat. I thought cat he was, was weird. Right. The cat was alright. It was an interesting accent choice. I don't know what to label it. The cook looked like a creepy Dickensian character with stringy, stringy hair. hair. <laughs> she did yeah. a good job. Mm -hmm. um, the Duchess, I thought, was good for the role. The baby was creepy. Sort of a <laughs> puppet, would you say? I don't know. It was weird. It wasn't the a real baby. baby was so so the cook, when the cook bounced <laughs> something off of the baby, of course, the baby was not hurt. The Duchess was just sort of patting the baby, you know for her beating the baby and Alice feels the need to rescue the baby I think mostly from the cook rather than the duchess mm -hmm. and then the baby they did this really odd thing where they showed like a little bit of gradual transformation yeah that was the creepiest part they had the baby sort of began to turn into the pig before it actually became the pig and then they used a real pig which was adorable but so. the half baby, half pig hybrid was very strange looking. It was looking. an interesting choice, yes. <clears throat> and then she has the whole conversation with the Cheshire Cat. The Cheshire Cat looks rather chubby and kind of cute. He looks really happy. Um, he was fine, but he was slightly creepy, which I guess is supposed to be the point. It was just, there was something about the way his mouth moved that I didn't really care for. <laughs> 
Hey everyone, just to remind you that this episode was part one of two. Next week we'll finish our discussion and talk about episodes three and four. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.